Tschüss. So next up is Jose Caravallo, who is going to talk to us about enhancing repositories and their value, um, with particular reference to an open access scientific repository from Portugal. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, auto enhancing uh, the repositories and their value with some services. And uh, the context here is a national initiative in Portugal named RUCAP. So, the contents for, for this presentation is a brief introduction to the, the national initiative, uh, then the, the services that we, we are talking about, and uh, some final remarks and conclusions about the, the project and these services. So, RCAP, it's an acronym from Scientific Open Access Repository of Portugal. It's a national initiative to promote uh, open access. Um, he has three main goals, to increase the visibility, accessibility and dissemination of Portuguese research results, to facilitate access to information about scientific output, and finally integrate Portugal on other international initiatives as we, we looked before with um, Open Air. So, some information about uh, the, the project story. It starts in 2008. Uh, the, the, f the first two services were the, the repository uh, hosting service and the, a search portal. Uh, then we create a validator and a common repository that I will describe next. Uh, in 2010, uh, data repository and uh, the Brazilian cooperation. And finally, last year, uh, a journal hosting service and a usage statistics tool. So the project has, um, has governance the Foundation for National Scientific Computing uh, that do does the general coordination and manage infrastructures. And then the University of Minho uh, make the scientific and technical coordination. For more information about the project, you can check this website with some text and uh, description in English. This um, website is a website to support the project, uh, for information about the project, and information for repository managers and uh, journal editors. It has some resources for training, uh, mainly in Portuguese, and some general information about repositories and uh, journals. Now, the repository service uh, that are in use now in Portugal. Um, first, the repository hosting service, that we call SARI. Uh, it's a free hosting service, it's important. Um, and we do uh, this hosting service with these space repositories. So the, the strategy for this service is to host a version of this space, uh, this space uh, repository. We create our own configuration uh, of uh, this space, we call this space plus plus. That's, it's nothing more than uh, a basic this space with some add-ons that we choose um, on the context of, uh, of our country and the needs of um, the, the institutions. Uh, all the repository have two languages, in Portuguese and English, as interface. And, um, we, uh, we, we make this, this hosting service with a particularity. Uh, all the design is based on the, the information of the institution, so they define how they want their design, uh, the layout of the repository. They have also um, personalized email, and the DNS, the URL, is also from the institution. So. Uh, for someone who visits the repository, it's uh, a repository that has no uh, disti distinctive um, information about the hosting service. Uh, another characteristic is um, repository managers have uh, totally 
administration of, of the this space repository, so they are total administrators. They can have uh, access to free help desk by email and phone. They have also some initial training sessions and some remote uh, training sessions. And now the service has 26 repositories from Portuguese institutions. An example of this uh, repository is this one. Uh, all the layout is defined based on the institution layout and the URL here and the repository for contact for the, the repository. Uh, another uh, service we, we create based <coughs> on this hosting service is a common repository. Uh, this common repository will um, uh, be used to small institutions that don't, don't have uh, a lot of um, scientific output and want to share uh, what they do in open access. So we create um, a basic this space, the same as the other uh, version of this space. Um, it's, it's based on one repository to many institutions. It's a shared uh, area. The administration for each institution is based on collection um, <coughs> and community administrators. So each institution has one community and can define the structure <laughs> of the, the rest of the communities and collections. Um, it's available uh, here and we have um, 13 institution now. Uh, another tool we created from the starting of the project is uh, a search portal to search all the repositories uh, in Portugal. This was the first uh, uh, idea and then we uh, made this, this kind of resources um, to, to open uh, open journal system, for example, for journals, uh, data repository, and uh, the Brazilian uh, initiative. So the search portal uh, has a um, very basic uh, layout, focus on the, on the search uh, function. Um, we have made also some, some um, efforts on design, on usability, uh, and maintain it as a, a OAE PMH harvester. So now he has uh, 42 resources. These resources are institutional repositories, 35. Uh, journals, <coughs> five for now. We are starting <coughs> from uh, some months ago, so we don't have um, much journals yet. Uh, one data repository, and we also aggregate a Brazilian Portugal, uh, a Brazilian portal um, from open access uh, output for Brazil. Um, so this is a OAPMH harvester and is updated daily. Uh, as the, the resources we have here uh, on the directory, we can check uh, some categories here and we filter to, to check uh, each type of uh, resource <coughs> we, we made available. Some more in technical information about this uh, search portal. Um, one very important is that it's also a OAPMH data provider, so everything that I it uh, aggregates from repositories, journal, uh, will be also uh, shared through this uh, new OAPMH interface. Uh, SRU data provider also. Uh, when uh, available and technical, um, uh, when it's possible technically, uh, we do also a full search, um, a full text search on the documents. Uh, we create also some <coughs> tools to export to web 2.0 uh, tools like Facebook, Twitter, and um, reference tools. Also uh, the curriculum Vitae de Gois is a national system for um, researchers curriculum. Um, then we have uh, also made some efforts to 3A accessibility and uh, advanced searchers, search, etc. Uh, here you have an example of uh, the result of, of um, a search, it's a, the, the details of a, a document. And here you can 
search for the, the curriculum vitae of this author on the other system. Uh, you have all the metadata based on Dublin Core from the repository and um, here the, some information, additional information about document type, language and here the sharing bar to um, social networks of, um, um, some tools to, to manage uh, uh, references and then the, the curriculum device uh, if you click here or here on the handle you go to the, the, the page of the resources the, the journal or the repository so another service uh, we, we have with between repositories and journals and the search portal is the um, a validator tool we call cap validator because it includes uh, some uh, information about driver guidelines and uh, some uh, uh, information that we we need for the project cap so we we created this as a tool so you can go to the website insert your uh, url or apmh select some basic validation options and then you will receive an email with this information. So the report is uh, um, some statistic information about what you have on your OAE PMH <coughs> and then a list of errors <coughs> based on driver guidelines. Uh, another important uh, thing um, also for repos repository managers is uh, each record uh, identified as an error as a description of the type of error. So you do, if you don't have the correct <coughs> language, uh, if you don't have the correct uh, um, document type or uh, another information that is not um, as driver guidelines uh, uh, state, uh, it, it will be made uh, an error here. So this, this uh, validator, uh, make a parsing of the XML of the OAPMH and uh, define, uh, based on some rules, I will uh, explain later, uh, if, the, um, if, if the this, this rule is applied or not. Another important uh, information here, and is related to open access, is uh, there is an option to check if the file really exists on the repository, because uh, some repository can uh, define uh, items as open access uh, with full text, but we we don't have a PD PDF file to, to to on the repository. So uh, a mechanism we introduce here is try to uh, download the file from the repository to check if it is uh, really there or not. Uh, the validation process uh, we have is based on two ways. So the validator tool uh, we, you, you have seen is uh, a web page and then we incorporate also this process uh, automatically um, on a daily basis. Uh, each time uh, it one repository is aggregated we check for these errors also and uh, if uh, an error is found on the repository uh, so we'll send an email to the repository manager to correct this information. Um, another important thing uh, about this service is that the, the RCAP project adopted the driver guidelines from the beginning in 2008 and this uh, mandatory um, it's mandatory to integrate the search portal so uh, before we integrate a new repository on, on the search portal we made a verification to, to check if the repository is 100% uh, compliant uh, finally, the three types of validation we make on the content is uh, the first type uh, verify if there is something inside a uh, Dublin Core element like title, author and date for example. Uh, another type of um, metadata validation is based on taxonomies um, related to driver guidelines for example if uh, the, the information about the language uh, is in ISO 6393 um, proto, uh, standard, 
if uh, uh, the repository has as driver uh, DC types um, uh, correct, and then uh, we check also the structure of the the content, uh, like if the date is correct or not, if he has or not uh, a driver prefix, for example. So this validation process is import important for the search portal uh, in order to make uh, metadata quality um, improved and uh, also to, to attribute to each repository a profile. In this profile, for example, we can uh, look of these uh, uh, like stamps of, of um, interoperability of the repositories. Uh, for example, this case is compatible with curriculum uh, Vitae de Gois, uh, is um, open air compliant, uh, it, it allows the full text search on documents and is also driver compliant. So this is important to, to, to check the, the, the repository and look uh, what uh, are the, 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 the information inside the repository. Uh, another uh, important uh, thing we developed for this structure is some this space add-ons that allows to uh, make repository driver compliant and to make um, uh, also this all this uh, infrastructure working. Uh, we developed these add-ons. I will check each one in particular. One very important is the Y extended add-on that uh, allows to uh, extend the basic uh, YPMH uh, server of the day space and uh, select information on the repository to deliver uh, driver compliant records, open air uh, sets, and for example, also electronic thesis. So the, 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 the important thing is, is that this add-on filter the content based on certain rules and modify some certain uh, information, like for example, if you have open access, we can add automatically a prefix to, to driver uh, compliant uh, guidelines. So it's possible also to define the, their own rules. Another important uh, add-on is the Minion Statistics add-on that creates uh, different levels of analysis of the repository uh, on the general repository, community collection, and documents. Also, the usage uh, stats and content stats uh, of the repository. And finally, uh, for the, the um, repository manager, some administrative stats based on the workflow, for example. Another interesting <coughs> uh, add-on is the request copy add-on that uh, will allow the, the, the user to send an email to the author requesting uh, a copy of the, the document and uh, this is also available when an item is defined as, um, as uh, restricted access. Another uh, important add-on is the sharing uh, bar add-on, mainly to, to use with rep reference management tools like EndNote, Mendeley and BibTeX for example. The Dugois add-on is very particular for Portugal because it's a, a national system for uh, curriculum of researchers. And uh, uh, this add-on allows to um, include on the workflow of the repository another step to uh, optionally send the information that we deposit on the repository uh, to our own curriculum. So this is a way to, uh, in one step, uh, puts the information on the repository and then send to our personal curriculum. Um, this integration is made in, on the two sides. Uh, from the, the curriculum, you can also uh, make your, uh, your, your information on the curriculum and then associate a PDF file and send to the repository based on the SWORD protocol. Uh, another um, add-on is usage statistics. Uh, it's an OAPMH data provider for uh, the repository. Uh, it uses open where real context objects from Pyrus and knowledge exchange reports, for example. You have here an example of this um, 
implementation and is used with another service that we, I will present next. Uh, other minor, uh, minor add-ons are Open Air Authority Control that allows to search uh, inside the repository the name of um, uh, the Open Air projects and put automatically the information on the, um, on the workflow. The document type adorns recent items on the first page uh, of on the home page of the repository, and then Portuguese help. All these adorns are available on this um, link at the website projectrecap.pt. Uh, another uh, service is a centralized uh, institutional repository usage statistics. Uh, this tool aggregates a uh, lot of repository um, from in, in Portugal that uh, are have installed the, the add-on. Um, so this tool aggregates the statistics of the repository and then allow the creation of uh, graphics. Um, it's ca some kind of a, a tool that allows you to, to define what, what kind of uh, information you, you want. You can uh, look for this type of event, uh, select one or several repositories, the, the range time, type of graphic, and also subs subscribe for this information. Um, another important tool is the normalization of the data uh, on this system, and uh, as one dependency is the Minostats add-on. Uh, this this um, service looks like this. Here you can define what you want, the, the, the statistic you want, and then you have your report that you can um, use as a CSV file, export to Excel. Uh, finally, uh, another service, a journal hosting service, based on the same uh, way that we create the hosting repository service, uh, with uh, uh, help desk training um, and use of driver guidelines so uh, as they, these uh, journals are aggregated on the portal, they have to have the same rules of repositories. So they have an implementation of driver guidelines and uh, can also be integrated with institu institutional repository with SWORD. This is some uh, journals. The final remarks, just to <coughs> To, to finish is the, the, evolu the evolution of the repositories in Portugal, mainly from 2008, um, made a great change and a great evolution. Here you can look for the evolution of hosted repositories, and then here the uh, local uh, hosted repositories that are lo uh, located at institutions. In terms of number of documents with the integration with Brazil, that have a lot of documents uh, from 2008 until now. We have made some great steps here. <coughs> uh, the evolution of Portuguese items also, so it's a continuous growing of uh, new open access documents. Another important information is about mandates in Portugal. So uh, in, in 2010, we, we verified that a lot of uh, new institutions have open access mandates uh, and this is important to um, to maintain this evolution of open access items and finally uh, some success factors uh, about these um, <coughs> services is the first interoperability uh, with uh, the, the validator tool and the driver guidelines that are two important uh, um, uh, tools we, we made uh, to make everything work and then the, the community with uh, the help desk and the training and uh, the open access advocacy also. And finally, uh, looking as repositories uh, as part of the research system and not an isolated uh, tool um, at, at the institution. Thanks. those um, last few slides, <coughs> sort of my eyes were watering at some of the numbers. 
um, if, if it's not too difficult a question, can you actually tell us, if you th think of a, a sort of medium-sized um, university in Portugal using the, the hosted repository service, how many downloads are they doing a week? You know, what sort of numbers are you talking about? It, it depends a lot of uh, the, the number of documents you have sure. on your repository. Sure. So but hundreds, thousands? A lot of tons, yeah. thousands. Yeah. They For example, very impressive numbers. Yeah. You, you can have, you can on, on an average size repository if you are already on the thousands per, per day. Right. So, so uh, on the biggest ones, probably more than 5,000 per day. So what we, we use as information, uh, it's, it's, it, it, it cannot be the, the author itself, but the person associated in the, this space that deposits this information. So in, in certain contexts, uh, if, you, if you make some batch import, for example, uh, you have one email associated to this uh, information. So the, the email goes to this uh, the depositor you know. uh, and after the depositor died I am is, is it the, the, the library of the, the institution is it a generic email of the library or it, it, yes it can be yes uh, it depends um, th this add-on basically sends uh, an email to the email of the depositor of this document so if it is the author, the author will receive this email. So if the author deposits this document on the repository with his own account, he will receive an email. If uh, it is the administrator of the repository that takes the, the paper and <coughs> deposits, so he will receive and then can uh, um, uh, send forward the, the email. I did understand that, but after long term, all the emails you, you store will be will be long. updated. Yeah, updated. maybe yes, but um, yet we don't have solution. For that. Uh, not uh, uh, it's not open source it's a uh, if, if you look at this validator as um, in, in technical terms it's quite simple okay. it's a quite simple tool uh, we developed um, for a specific need so when you create the the search portal we have to to have a, an automated system to, to check if the all the repositories really compliant yeah. because uh, if you don't have numbers, uh, you can look uh, for some records and, and say, okay, it's okay, but uh, all the rest of the repository isn't okay. So, um, but we can, we can share some information about this. Yeah, yes. that'd, be, that'd be really great. I mean, they, um, this wouldn't be hosted uh, um, uh, in a, a, a central place. This would be something for individual repositories to check against. Missing, um, so 
Yes, it's, it's what we do. Yeah, exactly. So I'll, I'll get my, um, the, it's called the Rio uh, Extension Project. Okay? As I said, we're working with our, the research councils uh, in the UK, yeah. again, with open air driver, and trying to consolidate. There are differences in the, in the fields currently. Yes, yes, I know. Um, I come from the University of Tromsø, and I, I, I too have a question on the validator. Uh, did I understand you right that you're checking the individual record if it contains a open uh, the, the the full text file? Yes, it's an so option of the validator. Yes. Yeah. So you you're actually identifying each record lacking lacking the file, or even having the file but not uh, accessible. So what what we the, the process we, we made is basic on, on profiles of validation. So you have a gen, uh, generic uh, information about the repository, and then you, can, you have to select uh, the platform you are uh, validating. So if it is a this space repository, uh, ePrints repository, a digital repository, for example, and based on these three uh, profiles, we can identify on the web page where the, the file usually is. For example, on the this space uh, page, we, we know that the, the, the file uh, of this item is always on a certain uh, location. So we check this file here and we try to download. After two seconds of download, we, we have the confirmation that, that something is there uh, downloadable. We, we don't check if it's uh, just a, an abstract or the, the full text or if it's good or bad. So it's just sh try to download the file. If some, something comes, uh, it's OK. Uh, if don't, so we, we mark it as, as an error. Thank you. <coughs> 